following lecture was produced by Gloria and Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Cognizance. From Latin, cognoscere, the range of what our consciousness can know or understand. Remember that co comes from the Latin together. Ignocere, gnosis, means how uh, we acquire gnosis together. Uncover the veil that shrouds heavenly spirits. Behold, every man and every woman is a star, like mysterious lamps hanging from the firmament. God is the flame that steers in everything, the vivifying geometry of everything. This is why the number is holy, is infinite, is eternal. There where he resides, there is no difference. Diversity is unity. So this uh, uh, statement taken from the book of the Master Samael on Veor, Tarot and Kabbalah is telling us a lot of wisdom, knowledge, and that's why we untitled this, uh, title this lecture, Cogn Cognizance, which goes along with the word Gnosis, Nosere or Gnosis in, in, in Greek. And uh, by studying the Kabbalah, we uh, discover uh, in the Tree of Life, that there is always that mysterious sephira located at the bottom of the first triangle, which is called dat, which means knowledge in Hebrew, which of course is nozere, as you see here in Latin, in gnosis in Greek. But this word ko, that means together, is pointing us to that unity which is above the first uh, triangle, or I mean above that, which is the first triangle here that we call Keter, Chokmah, and Bina. So exactly underneath this first triangle is that, which means knowledge. Why? It is because that, indeed, is a conjunction of the three primary forces 
that in Christianity are called Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Kabbalah, we state Keter, the Father, is knowledge. Chokhmah, the Son, is that which is knowing. And Bina, that which is known. So knowledge, knowing, and known are three parts of the same whole. That's why the sephirah da'at, which means knowledge, is underneath it. In order to show us that in order to get the knowledge, in order to know or to be in knowing and to be known, we need to work with that, which in several lectures we always address. But who is we? This is precisely the main question. As we were reading in the first graphic, behold, every man and every woman is a star. We are not talking about here, of course, the physicality, but the soul, the consciousness. Because as you see in the graphic, you find there Jacob, which is always related with the Sephirah Tifereth, which we call the human soul, and whose inner name is Israel. <coughs> so he is sleeping and having a revelation in the internal planes. How these men and women were rising to heaven by climbing a ladder and also descending from heaven by walking down on the same ladder. So, of course, this uh, reveal us that the soul, which is always outside of the body, is that emanation of the absolute that relates with, with this knowing. Kete, the father, is knowledge. And he wants us to develop that knowledge. And in order for us to develop that knowledge, is chokhmah. That's why we call it knowing. And when we acquire that in us, in our soul, with all the esoteric, alchemical work that we already know, then we are related with the known, which is that which is known in us, esoterically speaking. That's the real Gnosis. That's why the word cognizance is related with it, because relate to intuition, to perception, but with the consciousness. Cognition is precisely the other word related with cognizance that uh, relates to the word gnosis. So we are going to talk about the soul, which is the consciousness. In order for us to comprehend Kabbalistically, alchemically, what is that that we have to work with? And what is that knowledge that we are pointing at? And for that, of course, we have to address the Zohar. In the second graphic, we find the quotation from Zohar that states, the light created by Elohim 
in the work of creation, filled the world with its splendor, but was eventually withdrawn and concealed. Why? In order that the fornicators or transgressors of the, law, of the good law might not participate in it. And therefore, the Holy One conceals and preserves it for the doers as it is written. It is uh, uh, for the right doers as it is written. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. You see the word heart there points precisely to Tifereth, which is always related with the heart and with the soul, with a superior emotion. This quotation is for the Psalm 97, verse 11. So the light that we are talking about is precisely the five souls that we always address in Kabbalah. From the top to the bottom. Yehida, the first one. Haya, the second. Then Shama, the third. Ruach, the fourth. And Nefesh, the fifth. The five of them are emanations that we have to acquire and develop through the initiation in order to develop this knowledge that is already there in the first triangle of the tree of life as we explain. In order to comprehend this even better, we always address the first verses of the book of Genesis, where it is always talking about it. In Hebrew, we read Barashit Bera Elohim Adha Shamaim Veat Haretz. These uh, uh, first verses of the first chapter of the Bible, we have talked several times about it. And now we are going to talk about that in relation with these five souls in order for us to comprehend. We read this first uh, chapter of the Bible as follows. Bar a sheath. Bar a Elohim. At ha shamaim beat haritz. Meaning, the son I bring, the son of a Elohim, as at the soul Yehida from the bosom of the Ein Sof, which is the Logos, at in the heavens of Aziluth, Bria, and Yatsirah, and in the earth, which is Asya. So, the light is the first emanation of the absolute but of course, there are many modes of the light that we have to learn. This light that emanates from the absolute is called in Hebrew, or is written with Aleph, Vav, Resh, Aur, and is pronounced Or. So this Or, of course, is hidden within the first chapter of the book of Genesis. 
because we always address in Kabbalah the three primary letters, or called three mother letters, which hide all of this mystery. Remember that the letter Aleph, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, is related with air, with wind, with the spirit. The letter Shin, which is the second letter, or I mean the 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet, is related with fire. Both together form the word Esh. And that means fire. That's why in other lectures, and even the Master Samael on the Or states that the first element that emerges from the absolute is fire. And of course, in Kabbalah, we explain that very well, that this Esh is precisely the fire in Hebrew, and the rest of the words of Bereshith makes the word Brit, which means covenant, means pact. So Brit Esh means the pact of fire or the covenant of fire created Elohim. And we understand that because Esh is precisely within the unknown, the absolute, but also becomes known in the tree of life. Because when we study the tree of life, in order to study the five souls, we understand that Keter, Chokmah, Binah, Chesed, Geburah, Tifereth, Netzach, Hod, Yesod, and Malkut are precisely the ten sephiroth that are the expression of that light that here we are talking about. So, that light is associated with fire, and fire is associated with light. So that's why when we said light, ish, or or, I mean, fire, ash, or light, which is or, is the same. Two aspects of the same thing. So when we study uh, the first soul, that is called Yehira, which is a Hebrew word, from masculine Yahid, the one, the only, the unique, from the verbal root Yahad, oneness, union, cognate with the Hebrew Ehad, which means one. In the Kabbalah, the highest soul principle as being the unique or single and indivisible individuality of the constitution and therefore corresponding to the self-realized monads. Yehida is presented in the book of Genesis as Yehi, representing Yom Echad, or the first light or day. Yet Yehida is esoterically the highest individuality or Keter Chokma Bina when united united in one Trinity. So that's why we said that here Keter Chokma Bina related with that Yehida that we, the Christianity called Holy Trinity. That is a soul in Kabbalah. This is why we have to understand the highest unity that are one 
with any self-realized master. How do we call those self-realized masters that are one with Yehida? We call them cosmo-creators. These cosmo-creators are called in the Bible Elohim, which means gods and goddesses that emanate from the absolute already self-realized. We have to state that those souls were self-realized in past cosmic days. And that's why now they appear as being one with that primordial light that we call the sun. In Greek, Christos, the cosmic Christ. As you see, this light has what we call the power of ubiquity above and below. Nothing can exist without them, without light. That's why we state that there are seven rays through which our monad belongs to. And in order for understand that, we take the letter Aleph and Shin of Bereshit, which are the fire of the covenant that we have to follow. So, the letter Aleph, as you see, relates to the three primary forces, Keter, Chokma, Bina. That's why the letter Aleph relates with the spirit, with the wind. And the letter Shin, which is fire, is also associated with it, but to the triangle below that we call Chesed, Gebura, and Tiferes. In Kabbalah, we always find this letter Shin associated with the three patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But there is one main thing here that is called Israel. Because it is written that Abraham, he said, had Israel in his bosom. And he passed them, those archetypes, to Isaac, which is Geburah. And Isaac passed those archetypes to Jacob. And that's why Jacob is called Israel, because those are the solar archetypes that everyone has in their own particular individual monad. So, in Gnosticism, we said the first triangle is what we call the Glorian, which is Yehida. And the second triangle is called the monad that everyone has within. So the monad and the Glorian associated in one is what we call Esh. Because as the letter Aleph has the three aspects of the first trinity, the letter Shin also has the three yards, which is fire of the trinity below. This is why when we talk about fire, we had to point to our inner monad, our inner God, and also beyond to the Glorian, which is the letter Aleph, together make that esh, that fire, that we always synthesize with the letter S. That's why the letter Shin sometimes is pronounced sh, and sometimes only s, like Israel. So behold that, the mystery, and of course, is in the very bosom, or bosom, we will say, of Bereshith. That is the pact 
when you, we enter and do brit esh, which means the pact with fire, it means that we are making pact with the very God. And we are going to explain how this yehida or light, descends. Because as we uh, explained, the, the first chapter of the book of Genesis is the sun bringing. That means a shift means to bring or to put. And bar is a, uh, Aramaic word which means sun. So it says, we put or we bring the sun, bar, which is the son of A Elohim, which is at, at the heavens, Hashamayim, and at the earth, which is Haaretz. Which means is this fire, this light, is above and below, but modify. Above is what we call the primordial light, but below is a modification, an unfoldment that finally becomes into Malkut, which is our physicality. That's why it is written in the Zohar, and Elohim said, that is, Elohim manifested himself by and through the divine logos, and thus by and through the word produce motion or vibration under the laws of which created matter or substance resolve itself into an infinitude of different forms. Let there be light. Now the word yehi, which means let there be, is composed of three letters, yod, hey, yod. Yod being the first and the third letter, and hey coming between them. The yod represents the male and the female principle. The full word is therefore a symbol of the divine father and mother, the final yod being the same as the first in order to show that all of the three aspects or forms, as stated, under which Ein Sof operated, in the creation and production of the universe, were only the manifestations of one and the same divine being. The first Yad also designates the Father, the engenderer of light. The second letter He denotes the Logos, the Son, the Word. The third letter Yod, the premial light, Zohar. This is very profound. That's why we place that picture there in order to point that light above and below. And the He, which is the galaxy in the middle. In order for us to comprehend that, but let us explain better. Remember that when we talk about the holy name of God, Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey, the first letter is Yod. And it's because that Yod is that spark of first light that appears in the universe in that in Kabbalah is called Keter, crown, which is light. And that's why Keter is symbolized by the letter Yad. And that's why the letter Aleph has two Yads. These two Yads that we are talking about. Not only the word Yehi, but the letter itself is showing it. The two Yads united by the medulla, which represents the letter Vav, which is cutting the two Yads in the letter Aleph. So, the word Yehi, as you see it here, is Yod, Hey, Yod. Two Yods. So, if the letter Hey, says the Zohar, is a symbol of the logos of the word, where do we place it? 
we place it, of course, at the throat. That's why that, which is knowledge, is always at the level of the throat. Because the first triangle of the tree of life represents the head. And that, the throat. It is to the throat how the three primary forces express as light, as word, in us and in the universe. <coughs> so that's letter A. The first letter Yod of Yehi, as is the Sohar is explaining here, is obviously Keter. And the second letter Yod is hidden in the word Yesod. When you write the word Yesod, you find that you write it Yod Samech Vav Dalet Yesod. If you take Samech out of the word Yesod, you find the hidden Yod. That always we take always uh, a special attention to Yesod because that is the Yod below. That we always said the Shakti potential of Keter descends in our sexual energy, and that is the Yad of Yesod. But somebody will say it well, but the very extreme of the tree of life is not Yesod, it's Malkut. And then we answer well, Malkut is also associated with Yod. Isn't it amazing? Because Malkut, according to the 10th Sephiroth, is a 10th Sephira. And Yod is a number 10 letter in the Hebrew alphabet. So Kabbalistically, there is no escape. In order to see that that light, which is Keter, which is the first emanation of the solar absolute, Ains of Or, Descends to Malkut, which is a 10. Now it said, Yad, yeah, is, is Keter. Yad, yes, is Malkut. And Yad, yeah, is in the sexual organs, because this is where the word Yad is hidden in the word Yeshad. So, in other words, physically, we have Yad as a crown on top of our heads. We have Yad in the sexual organs. And our physicality is the outcome of Yad, because in the last synthesis, the physical body is energy, solar energy. Somebody says, we physically are made of stars. Yes, it's true. But we don't care about physic physicality in that sense. What we want is to bring that light into the soul. Because that's the main point of Genesis. Or Yehida, which is the Christ. He wants to make of us solar men. And this is why he descends down to Malkut. In order for us to take advantage of that Yad. And do, we do it also through the He, which is him. The Logos, the Word. By mantras, by prayers. Doesn't matter through which religion. Any mantra, any prayer, any invocation is always related with the word. It's always related with Yehi. And this is how we see it. That's why uh, in the third graphic, from the Zohar as well, we have that marvelous image of that light above and below in the waters above which are the clouds and in the waters below which are the waters in the rivers or lakes or oceans. The Zohar states the premial celestial light of the first day Yom Echad this is how you say it in Hebrew 
is that which lightened the other days of creation. And therefore, the word day, yom, is repeated in every single day of Genesis. For the same reason, the scripture uses the word boker, which in Hebrew means morning. When you salute somebody in Hebrew in the morning, you say boker tob. Tob is good. This is good morning. So the word boker is in every single day of Genesis. Because remember that it says, and it was the evening and the morning, the second day. The evening and the morning, the third, etc. So that light is always hidden in every day. In connection with all the days of creation. As boker, morning, designates this, this premier light. The first day of creation... Yom Echad is the synthesis of all the other days. For as there is really no separate fractional moment in time, they only form part of the whole. So we are seeing how here, when we're talking about Christ, the light is everywhere. Even in the creation that we had to, to, to do. So that's why we said Christ or God, Elohim, is a multiple perfect unity. So Yehida is how you read, uh, you write Yehida. Yod, Het, Yod, Dalet, He, Yehida. And it's related with that word that we say Yehi. Even though it is written with he, but Yehida with het. In order to point that, in order to make light, you need the union of the two polarities. Because this is what the letter het, which is life, points at. The two polarities, male and female. That's why the Sohar states, wherever in the scripture this word Yehi, let there be, is used, it refers to our to, to or signifies this divine light, both in this world and the world of becoming, which is Keter. World in this world, which is Malkut, or in the world of becoming, which is Keter. Now below we said the expression congregation of Israel is the first instance in the first instance refers to the archetypes, firstborn children of light, or as they are termed in the book of Job, the morning stars, who along with the children of Elohim send their song of praise at the creation of the world. In an extended sense, it includes the true children of light who have attained unto divine life. So are. So as you see there, when we talk about the beginning of the universe, we bring Israel into account. Because Israel is related with Shin, which is our monad, and Aleph, which are the Elohim. In many lectures we stated that in the beginning of creation, our own particular monad became united with one of those rays. And this is how, inside of us, we form the word esh, fire. And that's what we call yehida. That's why when we point at that yehida, we are pointing at that uh, Light, which is inside of us, and that we call Elohim, our inner God, which is in heaven. So, this light, Yehida, as you see, has the power of ubiquity. Master Samael on the Or talks about the power of ubiquity that he has 
and that other self-realized masters have. Meaning that the soul, Yehida, has the power to express itself through many monads because he is a logos, the fifth of the seven cosmo creators that we call Elohim. And in the beginning of creation, all of us were there at that moment. And we receive the archetypes in our monad in order for us to develop them. Because those archetypes called Israel are always from the beginning of time, the beginning of creation. This is how we have to grasp this word Israel, with ish, ish, ra, the son, el is God. So when we said Israel or Israel, we are pointed at the monad with all the archetypes united to that particular Elohim to which our monad belongs to. From that point of view, or Kabbalistic point of view, we have to understand what Israel is. No matter if you are not from that race called Israel or Hebrews. Because this is a teaching that was given in order for all of us to understand our origins related with the soul. Because this is what we are, soul. So, let us now go into the second aspect of the soul, which is called Haya. Haya is applied <coughs> to the monad as well. But when we talk about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we, sit, we say Yehida, Keter Chokmah Binah. And when we say Keter Chokmah Binah, we understand. Keter rules the first triangle. Chokmah rules the second triangle. And Binah, the third triangle of the tree of life. So therefore, that is Yehida is in everything. But Binah, which is the expression of the duality of that Yehida, is what the Bible calls Jehovah Elohim. And is related to the Sephira Bina, which is the one that descends into the world of Bria. In that, in order to bring down Chokmah, which is the knowing, the known Bina, bring the knowing into the world of creation. And remember that Jesus Christ said, my father and I are one. Of course, from that point of view, we understand. Knowledge, knowing, and known are one. In Yehida. But in creation, we have to work with Haya. The word Haya is form or is written with het yod he. You see, you remember that the word yod he together forms that word that we call ja. You know, the people said hallelujah. That ja, yod he, in this case, represents the male and female aspect of the first triangle expressing itself through that. And that's why the letter Het, which symbolizes life, which in Hebrew is Chaya, is written with Het. And we talk about that in other lectures, so we are not going to extend a lot in it, because there is a lecture there when we talk about Chaya. But in synthesis, we have to state that Chaya is Bina, in that, and forms 
of course, life or that soul that in the book of Genesis called Nefesh Haya. Nefesh is soul and Haya is life. The soul life of the first triangle is Bina, the Holy Spirit, which in Kabbalah we call it Abba and Ima, father and mother. Through the father and mother, Bina descends Chokhmah, which is wisdom, into the world of creation, as we were explaining before in Barashith. So, in other words, Yehida cannot develop or to do in any monad what he has to do without uh, the help of Haya, the Holy Spirit, which is represented by father and mother, the sexual force, in other words. In the Son of Solomon, Chapter 8, verse 4 and 5, we find how this Haya is hidden in that uh, Son of Sons, which is a, a, a book very interesting, which is exclusively related to sexual alchemy, but in a higher aspect. Now, in other lectures, we explain that Bina, the Holy Spirit, is related with the letter Mem, which is water, which is that mother letter that we were missing, because we talk about Aleph and Shin. We talk about Mem, but Mem is Bina. That's why uh, the name of Bina is Elohim, we said in many lectures. Or Jehovah Elohim. At the end of Elohim is Yod, the letter Yod, Mem. And the letter Yod is Keter, expressing itself through the water, which is the letter Mem. That's why Yod Mem read, reads uh, Yam, which means water, which means ocean sea, lake. And that's why, uh, that's why it is written that uh, in the beginning the spirit of Elohim which is the Ruach was floating over Hamaim the waters. And this is very important to understand because really Ruach, here we are now addressing the third soul, Ruach, which what we've said is Chesed. We call it Ruach Elohim, because it is the spirit of Bina, which is the Elohim. Because in Kabbalah, in Yehida, we name the first, Keter, Eheye Asher Eheye, I am what I am. Chokhmah is called yod he vav he the sacred name of God. And Bina is called Jehovah Elohim, or yod he vav he Elohim. But the first Elohim appears here. Because Elohim, as we explained in other lectures, is El Hayam and El Yam, which translated into English means the God of the sea and the goddess of the sea. These two aspects, mother and father, are Bina, which is also represented in the letter Het, Haya. And Ya, as we said, is father and mother. It means that the soul of Ya, the soul of Jehovah Elohim, is Haya, which relates to the waters. That in Hebrew, in Kabbalah, we said waters. Hamaim. Reading backwards, we said me and ma. 
We talk about it in other lectures. In me and my, who and what? Or in Sanskrit, I mean in Hebrew, in Kabbalah, is mother and father related to the waters. Waters above, me. Waters below, ma. And the waters above are the cerebral spinal fluid. The water below, the sexual waters. So this is how we see how that haya, which is life, is hidden in the waters. And that is obvious. Because yehida, which is the light of the absolute, cannot manifest in any planet, even in us, without the water. In other words, we were said, Yehida expresses it to Haya, which is the second soul. But you can see that Haya as well is everywhere. If Haya is Bina, it means that it's also in Yehida, the first triangle, but also in the second and in the third, and even in the physical world, because Haya, life, is everywhere. Any type of life is higher. That's why animals below are called hayot. That means animals. But the beings which are being born above are called chaim. You see the same word, but applying the word me backwards, chaim, above which is in heaven. The waters of heaven is Chaim, but the waters below is Hayot. That's why many words of demons ends like in the lower water, like Chavayot, down. So, Solomon said in that chapter 8, I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that you stir up Ma, and Ma will awake my love till she pleases. He's talking about, of course, the lower waters, which are above. If you see the word Ma, which is the opposite uh, of the end of Hamaim are the waters in Malkut. To steer their waters, when we steer it, they go to the letter Vav, which is the spinal medulla, up. That's why it says, Awake my love till she pleases. And now Solomon addresses the superior waters when we find the Yad. It says, Me is this that comes up from the wilderness, leaning upon Ma, his beloved. Me rose, Shama, the fire of Ma, up to Shamaim, under that, the apple tree. There, Shama, Ma, thy mother's fire, brought thee forth. She, Shama, the fire of Ma, brought thee forth. Neshama. Shama, bear thee. Neshama. Neshama means soul. Ruach means soul. And also breath. And Neshama also breath. Yehida is also breath. Haya is breath too, life. So you see this? It's addressing always the soul. This type of soul also has the power of ubiquity. In Genesis 9 12, it is written, And Elohim said, This is the token of the Brit Esh, the covenant which I make between me and you and every nefesh haya that is with you for perpetual generations. 
In other words, what is written above is the covenant that we are talking about, the Brit Esh. And that is written in Genesis 9, 12. After Noah comes out of the ark. This is, this is a covenant. That you have to work with the waters. Because Noah was in the ark 40 days and 40 nights. That means he was working with the waters. He was an alchemist. This is how we have to understand it, alchemically speaking or cabalistically. Not to take that story in a very literal way and to uh, start talking like childish things. People that are still are looking for that ark. You know? That the ark is the arcanum, the mystery of the waters, which are hidden in mem, which is the water, yam. Because this is what is, is written. Ya hamaim, the letter yod is hidden within that. If we are not performing that covenant, Brit Esh, which I make between me and you and every Nefesh Haya that is with you for perpetual generation. Well, we name Neshama, which is precisely the other soul that the Bible talks about. We talk about Ruach. The Ruach Elohim, which is precisely that second soul that relates to our inner most, to our inner God, to our, our inner spirit. That's why Ruach means spirit. But Kabbalistically, is the, is the third soul that appears. And appears precisely in the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis continues... Saying, and the earth was void and formless, and darkness was upon the surface of the depth. And this is written like this And the earth was void and formless, and darkness, the word darkness, is related. With the senses. Darkness is written with K, I mean with, uh, uh, with the letter Kaf. Letter uh, Aleph, Shin Kaf, Haf, Kaf, or Kaf. That darkness relates to the senses in your head because letter kaf at the end of that word symbolizes the head and in the head we have the senses so the senses are precisely the way through which we capture the light in any body. Remember that the light or the fire modifies into the tatwas. And this is how we capture them through the sight, to the nose, to the ears, to the mouth, to the touch. Everything is in relation with light. We feel the heat of the light when we are under the sun. We smell that light in different lives or highest I'll be finding nature. And we hear the sound of the fire as well. So everything is in relation with the senses. But of course, in this universe, we have to develop other senses related with our psyche in order to acquire that cognizance. Or that knowledge. Because that knowledge relates to the light. That's why the consciousness is the main point here. When we liberate the consciousness, we are liberating light. 
we are liberated in fire. Esh. And that is what the consciousness is. Master Samael on VR states at the end, even the physicality has to become soul. And this is beautiful to understand it. <coughs> because life, the higher or the father and mother, transform that light in different levels in us. Or that Yehida. This is something very important to point here that the Master Samael of the Earth states in the perfect matrimony. When the initiate creates the astral solar body in the third initiation of major mysteries, he experiences birth, life, death, and resurrection of Christ. Because Hod, which is the astral light, is a manifestation of the Lord. But in the physicality, when we transform that, it's a unity. Imperfect unity, but it is. Thanks to that light. But in the alchemical work, when we create the astral body, we create our own particular individual, Jesus Christ. And we experience the Gospels for the first time from the beginning until the end. Because that astral solar body is a unity. Give us a unity in the light. We call it light body or solar body is the same. And that's why you experience the whole drama of the Gospels when you create that particular individual Jesus Christ within you in the third initiation of major mysteries. That is one of the mysteries of ubiquity of Christ in the very lower level, which is the astral body in each one of us. This is how Hahura Mazda, Christ, Avalokiteshvara, Kuan Yin, Expresses itself through any initiate in the third initiation. That's the power of ubiquity of the light and the expansion of his body through Yesod, because it's a mystery of alchemy. So that's why <coughs> we experience that unity in us. That's why the Master says, once we create the astral body, we are individuals. If we die, we don't lose individuality. Because here in this physical world, somehow, we think we are individuals. Why? Because we have the physical body, which is one, which is many elements in one, the organism. And that's why we say we are individuals. And we have the personality as well. Each one of us has a different personality, but the personality that we have is also a unity. But that we are going to lose. Because it's not solar personality. And the physical body is not solar. It's not soul. You know that if we die physically, we go to the grave and we disintegrate there. That individuality is lost. And the individuality of the personality is also lost when we die. But the astral body, we don't lose it if we die. Then we continue being what we are in the other dimensions. That's why when we address the physicality or the personality, we said perishable. It's not a perfect unity. It's an imperfect unity. That's why it disintegrates. It dies. And this is what we have to understand. Because somehow, certain Kabbalists call the physicality and the personality Yehida. If we can apply that term to the physicality and personality, we can, but we don't deserve it. Because it's not a personality or body of, of light. 
The physicality that we have is accustomed to discharge the light of the Lord. Now we enter into the fourth, the third. We talk about the Ruach. But this is also, uh, and it is because when we talk about the Ruach and the Shama, both of them form the Monad. Because Neshama is related always with the spiritual soul, Geburah. And Ruach is always associated with Hesed. That's why when we associate these two elements, spirit and soul. But Kabbalistically, we call both of them soul. And even in Sanskrit, Hesed is called Atman, which means soul. Atman de ineffable. Ruach. Elohim. If we put here Ruach Elohim in order not to be confused because this Ruach is also called reasoning, intellect. Below here, you have your mind, that's the Ruach, but not the Ruach Elohim. This is a lower intellect, subjective reasoning. The objective reasoning of the being is called Neshama. That's why certain Kabbalists call Neshama intellect. But it's an illuminated intellect. What we call it objective reasoning of the being. Which nourishes itself with the information that that particular initiate receives from that Neshama. Which is always up there in the monad. And in Neshama we always state are the principles the archetypes of Israel, and in also in Hesed. But if we want to develop those archetypes within us, Nefesh, which is called animal soul, we have to begin with alchemy. Because that Nefesh has to develop up to Tifereth. And when we reach Tifereth, and this Jacob named Israel, because he defeated the mechanicity of this nature in five initiations. In Yesod, of course, which is the base. Neshama, as you see there, associated with the word Chaim, which is also translated as life. When you said Otz Chaim, means the tree of life. But it is written, in Jehovah Elohim, you see, this is the name of Bina in Kabbalah, Jehovah Elohim, formed Adam of the dust of the ground. That dust of the ground is Malkut. And breatheth into his nostrils the Neshamot Chaim. Breath of life is translated. But really this is plural. Chaim means lives. And Neshamot here, which is at the end, instead of the letter He, it has the letter, te, the letter Tav, which means plural as well. Feminine plural, masculine plural. We will said, the souls of lives, or the breaths of lives, is what Jehovah Elohim breathed into Adam. And Adam became and Efesh Haya, living soul. This is a very complicated verse that is easier to understand when you know Kabbalah and alchemy. Because this, Jehovah Elohim, a beautiful picture here of uh, William Blake, is making precisely what the verse is stating. Forming Adam and Efesh Haya, even physically. The Master Samael on the or in Mexico state us. All of this work that we are doing, Gnostically speaking, is to crystallize knowledge. But this knowledge is self knowledge and is related to the consciousness, it means cognizance, something that we grasp, that we developed through our senses. 
Because in the beginning, it is written, the earth is formless and void, and darkness is upon the face of the abyss, of, 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 the, of the depth. That darkness means that we do not grasp the light from the senses. Because within the word darkness is hidden the Hebrew word sense, to capture. That means that we have to exercise our senses. And many times we always stay here. We have to exercise our senses in order to capture the light, in order to capture life. Because life comes to us through impressions. And those impressions enter to the senses. But this is not the only impressions of life or, or light that we want to understand, to comprehend. But also, the other impressions related with other higher dimensions. Because Neshama is in relation with that. That's as the, the only aspect of Neshama. Neshama itself, it says St. Kabbalist, it's divided in three aspects. Ruach and Nefesh. But what is that Neshama in us? Neshama in us is the essence. That's part of it. But just the essence. That essence is inside of us here and now. It's a consciousness. It's the soul, in other words. But an embryo of soul. And nature gave us in order for us to act in this humanoid body that resembles a unity, intellect, and that is called ruach. You see? He said, that don't fall into mistake here because the ruach Elohim is nefesh chaya, is a higher, is binah. But that ruach that we are naming now that is reasoning, intellect, is mechanical. This is what we have related to the protoplasmic bodies. We use intellect, we use reasoning in order to communicate in this society. That's ruach. And nefesh is the basic life that we have in the vital body, in our sex, in the protoplasmic bodies. So we have ruach and nefesh inside and a piece of neshama inside as well. This is what is happening everywhere. Kabbalists and theosophists think that everybody has neshama within. No. We have to, to gain that, to incarnate that. We have to go from Malkut up to Keter in order to develop that neshama. That's why the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 says, The neshamot implying that that consciousness, that spiritual soul, is acquired in different steps and different degrees through initiation in the second mountain from all the tree of life. That is Neshamot. It's not one. It's many. And the Holy Spirit, which is Jehovah Elohim, is gathering all of that Neshama, which is in this case Neshamot, Right? Of Chaim. And when we said Chaim, we said Ot Chaim is a tree of life. Or the tree of lives. See? So Neshamot Chaim, that is addressing there, is not one soul. Is that soul, but in many aspects. It that we call Israel. You see? Many parts. That's why the, the Bible talks about Israel 12 tribes, 12 aspects. But every tribe, many as well. And it's because through the initiation, we are developing that neshama, or we are developing all of neshamot, spiritual souls, and make it one, chaim. And that is what Jehovah Elohim breatheth. So when you reach Keter, the top of the second mountain of the tree of life, then Jehovah Elohim, which is the Holy Spirit, Bina, says, this initiate, 
reached here the higher level, and we collected all of that. Now we are going to breathe all of these spiritual elements of the tree of life that he gained by meditating and annihilating the ego into initiation are going to breathe in him. And Adam became Nefesh Chaya, a living soul. That is the living soul that has within Neshama. So to find somebody that have that inside, it's not easy. But everybody think that he is made into the image of God. The image of God that we are talking here is Yehida. All that image is the tree of life. To gather all of those aspects through initiation, especially to gather all of those parts. And to receive that in the resurrection, this is how it said, now this Adam is no longer a common and ordinary human being, <coughs> but is made into the image, you see, of Yahovah Elohim. Because Yahovah Elohim brings Yehida down and in other aspects. And that's why it is written that the one that resurrects has the power of ubiquity. How do you understand the power of ubiquity? You absorb Neshama or Neshamot Chaim inside of you. And that Neshamot Chaim is related with the tree of life. And the tree of life is in relation with Nefesh Chaya. Or that Chaya, which is the Holy Spirit. Which is the expression of Yehida in all the universe. And that's why Krishna, in front of Arjuna, said, You want to see him? what I am, and he expresses himself and shows all the multiplicity of himself in front of him. Because this is precisely the ubiquity of the light that you absorb when you resurrect and then you understand what God is in the light outside and inside of you. And that is the Neshama. So do not think, please, that when you are born physically as a baby, you receive that neshama. Because then, then everybody will be an illuminated and enlightened, will be a humanity with Buddhas, enlightened ones, like in the sun. But this is the planet Earth, and we don't have here Buddhas. We have, but we can count them with the hand. One hand. What we have is demons, which are many, and they have the dare to call themselves made into the image of God. No. That Salem is precisely something that we had to build, that we had to gain in order to be called, or to have the right to call human beings, living souls, into the image of, of God. And that is the Neshama. But right now, as I said, we have just the essence, part of that Neshama, which is the material that God gave us in order to build all of this that we are explaining here. That's why when somebody is self-realized in different levels of realization, because there are many beings that self-realize, when you reach Bina, you are self-realized. But many other enter into Chokhmah and higher to Keter and even gone to the Absolute, like the Master Samael, that returned to the Ein Sof. That power of ubiquity that we acquire by entering into the Ein Sof is somebody, something that not everybody acquires. Other beings that self realize, they reach Bina and become one with Yehida and have the power of ubiquity but in the lower level. There are many masters in the universe with the power of ubiquity. And those masters that reach that power of ubiquity have the power to help other monads that belong to different race, as you know. And this is precisely the mystery of ubiquity that only is acquired 
but all that self-realized in the different degrees from Bina up to the absolute. So that is the soul. Neshama. <coughs> now, the work of Ruach, Elohim, which is that other soul that we always name, that Ruach is a soul. But we are naming here the Ruach, Chesed. Not the Ruach that we have in the intellect. That is a lower Ruach. It's called Ruach also because we have it, but it's mechanical. The Ruach Elohim is precisely that Ruach that is related with the wind and that works in alchemy with us. Remember that we always stated, when you work in sexual magic, when you work in alchemy, transmutation, even through pranayama, concentrate in your inner most, your ruach, Elohim, your chesed, your spirit, because he is the one that hovers upon the face of the waters, your sexual waters. And he is the one that manipulates that in the exodus. In this day and age, a lot of people are talking about the exodus. Moses, precisely, did all of those marvels in the book of Exodus, thanks to Jehovah Elohim. If you read the book of Exodus, you said in Jehovah Elohim, or Jehovah told him this and that. And Jehovah Elohim was the one that divided the waters. Because he is in the waters through the Ruach, which is the wind, the spirit. So when you read Exodus chapter 15, verse 8, literally, then you, you imagine that Moses is remembering the people in the earth, how they came out of Egypt through the Red Sea, etc., etc., but this is an alchemical statement. All the book of Exodus. We want to go into the Exodus out of Malkut into the promised land. We have to work with alchemy. And that's why Moses said, and by the Ruach of your noses, the translation says, and by the Ruach of your nostrils. But the real word here is noses. Your, sexual, your waters were gathered together. But I put in between parentheses, your sexual waters were gathered together. Because if you put your noses, you will say, well, I have only one nose, not two. But when you are in the sexual act, transmuting your sexual waters, there is the nose of your wife and your nose as a man. So there are two noses, and they are cooperating with the breathing, you see, breath. is always related with Ruach. Breath is always related to Neshama and to Nefesh. To those, that breathing, that Ruach, in other words, your own particular inner most works through your breathing system in order to transmute the sexual waters. And this is what that Exodus, that chapter or that verse says in the book of Exodus. And by the Ruach of your noses, your sexual water will gather together in the sexual act. Your flowing waters were lifted up like a pillar. And he says, where well, are my sexual water lifted up as a pillar? Then you imagine your spinal column. That's the pillar, the central pillar of the tree of life. Through there is how the light that comes from the waters emerges or rises or the cloud as well. The steam or the transmutation to pranayama rises like a pillar. And the depths of Yesod coagulated in your hearts. Hearts, plural, is lebalim, libeb, libeb, how do you say that in Hebrew? 
lamed b or, or bet means heart, but when you add it yam at the end, it's plural, hearts. And the translation says, in the depths of the waters coagulated in your in the heart of the sea. Could be also, but the heart of the sea, what sea? Your own sea, your own waters. But it that coagulates in your heart because that's the process of transmutation from the depth to Yesod until your heart. And in Yesod is where is Nefesh. Nefesh, of course, is uh, is that animal soul that everybody has, which is the vital force in your physicality, in your vital body especially. That's nefesh. And also called uh, nefesh, uh, we also address as also the substance, the soul substance. Remember in another lecture we said, let the nefesh chaya gather together and uh, open the firmament of heaven and, uh, and the birds appear, which are the angels. All of that relates, of course, to this Ruach. Ruach is the one that does it. Not forget that. That soul that you have within your own chesed, your own Ruach, your innermost, is the one that, is the one that gathers the waters and transmute the sexual energy of the two polarities, mother and father, when united in the sexual act. That's why we put there this uh, beautiful painting as well, a graphic of William Blake. When Elohim, working with all the angels that are already twice born, and in in below, the couple, working in chastity, transmuting the sexual forces, Thanks to Ruach, the innermost. So that's what we have to understand, to comprehend. That the Ruach Elohim also has the power of ubiquity. Because it's the wind. That's why it's written, Jesus said to Nicodemus. It is necessary to be born again by the water and the spirit. Which is Ruach. Do not marvel that I said that you have to be born again by the water and the spirit because the wind, which is Ruach again, the spirit, blows wherever he likes it. He's talking about alchemy. The Ruach is the one that does the work. Don't forget that. Because if you are there practicing and not remembering God, you are doing nothing because God is the one that does the work. And finally, we arrive again to Nefesh, that we always associate it with the Holy Spirit, because Nefesh Chaya is precisely the life force of the Holy Spirit, which works in Yesod, which is the triangle of the Holy Spirit, in order for us to be born. It's written <coughs> in Proverbs 10, verse 3. Yod Hava will not allow the nefesh, soul of the righteous, to vanish, to famish, to starve, in other words, to starve with knowledge. But he cast away the Hava, substance of the wicked. You see how, when you investigate this Hava, which is precisely the three letters of Yod Hava without the Yod. Hmm? This Hava is called substance. Sometimes weakness. Uh, weak, weakness when, when you are weak. Sometimes it's associated with that, with impurity. That's why we said in another lecture that Hava Yod, which is Yod Hava backwards, means the impure yod or the impure lingam. 
and that is associated with Havayot, or as other Kabbalists call Havaya. Havaya means the impure Jah, because Jah is yod He, or the impure sexual act, Havaya, Havayod, Havayot, the opposite, Jehovah. So Jehovah, with rules, Yesod, is the one that will not allow the nefesh, the soul of the righteous, to famish, to starve. It multiplies the knowledge. But those that are fornicators will cast away because they cast away the substance which is nefesh in themselves or called animal soul because we are animals. So in synthesis, Neshama is Kabbalistically divided into three higher aspects. In Asilut is Yehida or Keter Chokmah Binah. In Bria is Haya or the soul of Yah and the Ruach Elohim of Binah in that. In Yetzirah is Neshama Chaim. In Asia, the Neshama, psyche or soul of animals and humanoids comprises three aspects, namely nefesh, ruach, neshama, or animal soul, thinking soul, and the essence. These three aspects manifest themselves as thoughts, feelings, and actions through our physicality. Ruach forms with nefesh, our protoplasmic bodies, the personality, and also our physical individuality. The essence, a fraction of Neshama, is combined with Ruach and Nefesh. These are called, if we deserve it, Yehida. The combination of the essence with the protoplasmic bodies, or essence, and ruach, is that which the theosophists call the dual manas, the higher and the lower manas, that when united to nefesh higher, soul, life, or vital body principle become one imperfect unity, or humanoid, in other words. So, all of these souls, we call it there, Neshama, because that really how in many parts of the Bible the soul is called Neshama. But living soul is Nefeshaya. Ruach is also soul. And sometimes Yehida, for instance, Yehida, when you uh, write. Uh, Yehida, and you put the letter He here instead of the letter Chet, then the word is Judah. That's why when you talk about Judah, you talk about the solar light, which also Yehida. To be or to belong. To the tribe of Judah is to say, I am a self-realized master. Or my monad acquires self-realization. That's Judah. Judah in itself relates with the three primary forces, Ketecho, Mabinah, and the Ains of Or. That is Judah. So therefore, if you call yourself Jew from Judah, you are saying, I want of the soldiers, of the army, of the voice that in the beginning created the earth or this uh, planet. If you don't remember that, it is, of course, it's absurd to call yourself a Jew. 
But in this day and age, you know, a lot of people call themselves Jews. But uh, uh, to be a Jew or to be for the tribe of Judah is to say, I belong to Yehida. The only way that we belong to Yehida is with our physicality and personality because Yehida means unity. We have this unity that we are going to lose. So we don't have an eternal unity, a true individuality, as the Master Samael says. But we have to work very hard with that light, with Haya, or the life of the Holy Spirit, with Neshama, which develops through meditation and through the initiation, to Ruach, which is our inner being, the soul Ruach, that helps us to transmute and that does all the work of initiations in himself, in Nefesh, that is, that's where we are. And we said, well, Nefesh is animal soul. Where are the animal soul? Is here, present, in our physicality. This is where we are. So to call that Nefesh Yehida is really, we will say, because we don't have other word. But Nefesh is Nefesh. If we call that Yehida, we will say that Yehida is a multiple imperfect unity. So I study those five aspects of the souls in order to understand the power of ubiquity because all those souls have the power of ubiquity. All the souls, even Nefesh. Nefesh is the life that we have in the vital body. And somehow we are related with that force. When we, we make a chain, we are sharing that force. which is our vitality, vitality, nefesh. And we are concentrated in our own in, innermost. We are sharing the Ruach as well. And the light that comes to that chain is Yehida. And in the chain are male and female. That's Haya. You have questions? So, uh, during the lecture, you, uh, we talked about the five types of souls also talked about Nefesh Haya, and at some points you sort of associated that with, with uh, Neshama, and other times you associated that with, uh, with Bina. Um, can you elaborate a little more on Nefesh Haya, and uh, how, it, um, how it's, it's distinguished from like Haya, for instance? Haya itself is father and mother, that descends from Bina. And that work through Nefesh, which is that vital force in the vital body, in order to create Hayot through fornication, hmm? in order to create Chaim through transmutation, which is the tree of life. And of course, that Haya is the one that works with you, collecting all the Neshamot all the souls of the second mountain, which is a spiritual soul. And that's why when we name uh, Haya, we are associated with Neshama, we are associated with Nefesh and with Ruach, because in the alchemical work, all of them are one unity, one whole, which in the depth is Yehida, the light. So this is precisely what we had to see. This is how alchemically we had to see it. And of course, the nefesh of a resurrected master is a nefesh higher. Because that nefesh penetrated into bina. And therefore, is equal to bina. And that's why it says, in Adam became a nefesh higher. Even the flesh became one with bina in resurrection. So therefore, whatever bina is, that Adam is as well. Ubiquity. This is why we had you want to, to understand. And this is why we develop the cognizance. Because to that soul, in any level, we acquire that knowledge through the senses. Five senses, 12 senses, and other senses that we develop in the higher levels, through which we capture the light. In the end, 
what we want is to make of the matter soul and to penetrate into the absolute in order to understand our own individuality within the vast light of the uncreated light and to comprehend that. If we don't do that, we will return into the solar absolute, into the absolute, and we won't understand. But if we develop that soul as in the, in the way that Jesus of Nazareth developed, he enters into the absolute and understand that he is part of the absolute and he uh, observed, beholds that light and understand what the Father is and what he is. That's beautiful. And this is precisely what the absolute wants on each one of us. He demands from us, from us that. To build that in order to return into his bosom and to understand that. Because right now, even with all this explanation that I gave you, I think that you don't understand. <laughs> Do you have any other question? So, just... <laughs> in the Chayim. So the Chayot, that's the, uh, the female, right? And the Chayim is the male in it. Is that related to, to Paul when he refers to the, uh, uses the female to refer to the physicality and the male to refer to the, uh, the, the spiritual? That the Chayot is, is, uh, is like physical lives and the Chayim is... Uh, is spiritual. Yeah. Yes. Same, that is it. Chayim is a spiritual lives, plural. Chaim, that was called Ot Chaim, the tree of life. Huh. And Chayot, which is the same root of life, is we are, we are Chayot. In other words, animals. With the opportunity to become Chaim. If we work with Chaya in our own Nefesh, in order to develop our Neshama, thanks to Chaya, the Holy Spirit. And in order to reach the higher levels, we need to incarnate Yehira, which is Christ. When we reach the fifth initiation, then Yehira himself descends because he says, this person developed solar, mental, and causal solar bodies and develops a lot of Neshama. Now I enter into him to help him to develop beyond the fifth initiation. And that's the incarnation of Christ that we call the Venustic initiation. Yeah? So, in, in terms of the Hayat and, and Hayim, when we say Hayat HaKadosh, and we're talking about the sin, and the, are we talk, does, does that mean that we're talking about those four archetypes within, within this physical world? Exactly. That's a good question. Because when you investigate the Sphinx of Egypt, you discover that there is a temple in the fourth dimension, which is the vital world, Yesod, the fourth dimension. In there, you find a temple of the Sphinx, which is the temple of Mother Nature. Because all the forces that come from above crystallize in the four elements, symbol of the four uh, parts of the Sphinx. Those four elements, of course, are water, fire, air, and earth. And this, in, in Kabbalah, is called Hayot, which means are the forces of Malkut, the forces of life of Malkut, Hayot. But HaKadosh means holy, right? It means that you are working with the holy elements, to transmutation. That is called Hayot HaKadosh. Right? Is as we explained in the beginning. This Hayot HaKadosh have, have the Yod of Keter in Malkut. Because remember, Malkut is the tenth Sephira. Yod is the tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And that Yod is the first spot that appears, which is called Keter. So that Yad in nature, when you are working with that fire, you are working with the fire in the water. 
with the fire in the air, with the fire in the, in the earth, and the fire in the fire. Those are the, the four elements there. The Yad, the Shakti potential. It is called uh, in the invocation of Solomon, Hayot, Ha Kadosh, the holy creatures. Right? When we work with them. In Malkut, the Divine Mother. Let's uh, go to the question there from. The gunas, yeah, of course. In order to balance the gunas, we have to work with the elements because the elements are the same gunas, unbalanced. And we work with Mother Nature, with the Sphinx, we are working with the gunas. But the balance of the gunas is something that you acquire in different degrees. Many masses say that because you self-realize, you are completely uh, balanced. You completely balance all the gunas. No. At a certain degree, your gunas are equilibrated. But if you appear again into another Mahamambantara, that means that your gunas are not equilibrated. They are, but not at the level that you need in order to remain in the absolute. So that's why that equilibration of the gunas, or the Divine Mother, is a lot of work. That's why in many of the rituals we said that the alchemist is allowed to fall or to descend seven times in order to perfect the equilibrium of the gunas. Beyond the seven times, you can fall into damnation because it's always Yehida, the light of the Lord, the one that descends in order to help you to equilibrate that. When you equilibrate perfectly the gunas, or the Hayot HaKadosh, the animals, the, that which represents the four lower forces, the animals, in you, that means that you can drive the donkey into Jerusalem, your mind, because your mind is the top, is the air of those Hayot. The fire is the lion, the pass. The face of a man is Yesod, the water, and the hoofs of the bull is the earth. So those four elements represent the sphinx that you have to work with that belongs to Mother Nature. That's why I call Hayot. When you perfect those Hayot, then you are perfectly balanced in your three brains. You cannot fall into temptation in any sephira of the tree of life. You are perfect, equilibrated. But in the universe, there is always the danger of falling to those self-realized initiates that still need more perfection or equilibration in the three gunas. Yes? Yes? Yes, Sod. Yeah, so is the Akash related with the Yin himself in the Yin? Or is the Akash? With the Akash, indeed, is related with Yehida. Because when we talk about Yehida, we talk about what, in this case, you call Akash, the Prana. The Prana is a positive aspect of Yehida, and Akash is the feminine aspect of Yehida. Because the light needs the Akash, which are the superior forces, right? Very elevated. So when you talk about Prana, you talk about Akash. That is Yehida. In this case, Akash, we will say, is applied to Bina. And Prana, or Yehida, to the other aspects of the Trinity. And is there a Hebrew letter that uh, designates Akash as Shin is fire? Mem. Because Akash is water. But not the liquid water that we find here. Water as Akash is energy. It's matter, but not with form. That's why when we address Akash, we say it's Mula Prakriti, the Divine Mother, as energy. But it's matter. 
That's why Matthew Samael said in one of his books, not even God can exist without the help of matter. So in other words, the prana cannot expand into the universe without the help of Akash. It's, a, it's matter itself. The thing is that when we talk about matter, we talk about this physical. This is a very more dense matter, very heavy. And we think that this is matter. This is, of course, matter, but it's a very heavy, lower matter. The matter itself, without form, is a divine matter. It's energy. And in, in, in it's negative aspect when we talk about the two polarities, positive and negative, right? Male, female. So Akash is the female aspect of the energy, which is matter. When the, that Akash crystallizes, then takes form. That's why I said God cannot exist without the help of matter. The two aspects of the energy, positive and negative. You have to meditate in that in order to, to grasp that with your intuition, with your senses. Because now your earth is formless and void, and darkness is upon your senses. When you say upon your senses, of your psyche, because the only light that we capture is this three-dimensional light through our sight, and all the phenomena through the five senses you know, of that light that we call life, Haya. But to go and to develop the consciousness, which is Neshama, and to capture the different modes of life in all the tree of life and forms of life, that is only if you develop your chakras. And to go into Yetzirah, into the Absolute, you need to develop intuition, which is beyond the chakras. It's a power, the Master says, that is beyond the chakras. That only when you develop the chakras, you can understand. In order to penetrate and to capture the light in all of his manifestations. That is called cognizance. Or we will say it in simple words, gnosis. Inside. The souls don't go into Ain unless they are perfectly, perfectly equilibrated. Even in the Mahapralaya? In the Mahapralaya, uh, the souls enter into the Ain Sof, mm -hmm. which is the second aspect of the Absolute. Or the Paramatasatya. The Paramatasatya. Jesus is an inhabitant of the Ain. He penetrated into the Ain. Our Master, Master Samael on the earth told us, Every time that I self-realize, because he, he did it three times, he says, I penetrated into the Ain Sof. I could never penetrate into the Ain. But this time, I hope I will do it, he says. Because, but he needs a perfect equilibrium. Because the initiate falls because of the mind. You see? The Ruach. The mind that you have, the solar mind. Even though it's solar, it's not equilibrated. It's matter that is not equilibrated. So you need to work very hard. That's why many great initiates fall. Because the mind, getting love, cannot control. That's Satan. That is the mind. Another question? Is that mm -hmm. somehow related with how uh, Keter, the Yod, is in Malkuth, is Yod? And it relates to all the souls. The void, perfect void, is the Ain. You, need, you don't need a form there in order to exist. But you need cognizance to penetrate there. That cognizance is your own soul that you built that's why the master says, a soul is built. You have to create it through initiation. 
So when you already understand this universe and you are ready to enter, it's because you, you are already developed. You are at the level of Yehida. All of us right now is a level of Nefesh. That I said. Some Kabbalists call it Yehida because we have somehow a physical unity or personality. But that is lost when we die. So we are not really. If we have the astral body, yes. We will set the more lower level of Yehida or Christ. And then you have to experience that in other higher levels. So to be here now, to understand through our orifices the light, the sound, because it's the consciousness, the one that grasps that and comprehends that. We need meditation. Because it's a, it's a vast world, a vast universe. You cannot develop that if you don't comprehend. Because cognizance is that comprehension. Right. Apprehension of the light is comprehension. Of Keter, Chochma, Bina, and on the tree of life. Through our Malkut. But we have to develop also the seven chakras. Because the light expresses in many levels. And is captured not only to the five senses, but also to the seven chakras. This is why Master Samael on Beor stated during samadhi or ecstasies, based on your sincerity and devotion, we will be allowed to visit the nuclei upon which the universe is based. Speaking allegorically, these nuclei look like orifices. You will then be able to contemplate the divine majesty of the Absolute. Samael Onveor. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.com.